today, I'm very privileged to be joined by Dmitry Volkov, who is a friend of mine, someone I've worked with in the past, and I'll give you his very esteemed introduction. He's a PhD, and I must say he is a PhD, not has a PhD. Uh, Dmitry is a PhD in philosophy. And I was thinking about the distinction of how sometimes you just explain this, and knowing Dmitry, with this particular subject, he is a PhD in philosophy. He's really embraced it. He's gone deep. He's met absolutely amazing world-class people, including the likes of Dalai Lama. And uh, I can attest to him being being a PhD, not having a PhD. There is a distinction, I think. He's a serial entrepreneur and investor in 22 venture funds, including Oak Tree, Kozler, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Kozler Ventures, 500 start and 500 startups, among others. He, he started in business at age 14, so you know, very much part and parcel with his, his key drive to be an entrepreneur. He started Social Discovery Group, and uh, which solves the problem of loneliness, isolation, and disconnection with the help of digital reality. Uh, so Social Discovery Group has over 40 brands at this stage, which now include dating and social and entertainment apps. Focused on, he's focused on AI, video streaming, and game mechanics. Together, the group have 250 plus million registered users globally, very much a global company, and 75 plus million messages a day, FYI. So, Dimitri, thank you so much for making the time today. We really appreciate having you here. Hello, I've, Mark. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. It's an honor for me to be here with you, and I'm really glad, uh, Mark, you're organizing these events. They're, I think, very important for the industry. Happy to be here. Great. A nice place for us to gather, you know, CEOs of dating companies from around the world with all our various focus, um, and wonderful to have you here. So, I mean, you built Social Discovery Group from absolute scratch. I'd love to capture your genesis story. How, when, when did it all start? What drove you? What's your very genesis, the beginning of it all? It's it's actually a lot of a lot of founders have a big story how they started the business they have a big reason why they started the business for me actually uh, I have to admit that there was a bit of an accident so when when I started actually I started with an IT company with a software engineering firm and I was interested not as much in the problem of loneliness or any other problem I was just interested in computers so my actual passion was was using computers to interact. Uh, so I I, uh, I hired some engineers and we started to do some real different jobs for for big companies. And we started working as what, what was called back then the offshore programming. And because I was based out of Russia, for me, it was more or less easy to hire engineers and uh, leverage their you know high skills and uh, relatively low cost. And one of the customers who turned up to come to my office was actually a, a catalog business. They, they had an interest and, and they were actually publishing printing catalogs in the USA with personal ads. So this was, I think it was more than 20 years ago. It was the time where internet was, was not as big and, and uh, there were no online dating sites. I think uh, match.com wasn't there at that time. At least we hadn't heard about it. So, uh, so the customer wanted us to automate the, the printing business of personal ads. What they were doing was the catalogs. They were actually sending those by postal mail and the catalogs was include uh, like ads of different people worldwide, I think. And uh, so single people are trying to connect and the company was selling, not the catalogs, but the addresses, the mail addresses all over the world. So you could connect with anybody. And then you send an, a postcard or a letter via, you know, regular mail. I don't think anybody now really realized that this was a pretty big story, pretty big business. And they were sending these, uh, these uh, letters and probably in two months uh, you could get a reply. And I think reply rate was extremely low and the uh, time to get the answer was extremely long. But people were actually really sometimes falling in love with that. And sometimes they actually had a very distant romance uh, writing to someone in, uh, you know, in uh, South Africa, in Colombia or in Mexico or in uh, Brazil or in Philippines or in India. So this was the business. And uh, I think the revenue of this company was about $800,000 uh, per year, or almost a million. And they asked us to automate the business. And that's how I got 
to learn about the industry. And my one of my first proposals was that, okay, we're building uh, websites for other companies. Do you want to have a website? And uh, the owner of the company said, of course not. Uh, and I said, why? And they said, well, because, you know, nobody you know, wants to connect online. It's like, it's weird. People would want to connect online. These would be really strange people because you have to have a connection with the, like the, the, the catalog is the physical object that you can actually touch and, and see the value of it. And then the actual letter is something that really transmits the, uh, um, the, uh, um, the value. So that's how, so that's how it started. And then, uh, to cut a long story short, I actually bought this company out. I, I had a, a pretty successful business with my offshore programming, so I was, I was, I just offered them to buy them out, and I actually managed to buy them out and turn this business into something that is it is now. So you know, we we do have uh, significant revenues over four hundred fifty million dollars a year this this year. We have always been profitable from almost from the first date. So it was, we were lucky enough to have uh, very little competition. And now we see our business not as, as much as dating, but as social discovery. And actually, I think what we are trying to do now is we're trying to solve the problem by helping people to improve their social skills, connect with people that they probably wouldn't connect if they were only looking in the neighborhood, and and actually get you know get get attention and and learn something. So we've uh, we've analyzed the uh, amount of communication that went through our system last year, and I think we've learned that uh, last year we had 0.2 billion times the word love mentioned in the chat in some way or another. So I think it's a good result. That's what we are trying to do. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's great. This so the sub segment we've kind of coined a term, premium international dating for a, for a more appropriate terminology and descriptor mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. sub segment, uh, the first company that you worked on that built you know to build social discovery group. So uh, this is a fascinating sub segment. I'm totally fascinated by it, and I think it's it's quite different from the rest of the industry for for a number of reasons. One of which, of course, is the critical mass issue. You you don't have a critical mass problem like mm -hmm. the rest of the industry, which is changes the dynamic quite a bit. How else would you say the PID industry is distinct and different from the rest of the dating industry though? Well, first, thank you very much for coining the term because I'm, I'm really, you know, we were not really able to define the niche where we're in uh, and you helped us a lot in, in defining this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think one of the advantages, I mean, we, so yes, we don't have a critical mass issue. We didn't have that 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 issue at all because we wanted to connect people no matter how far they are from each other. And at you know 20 years ago, it was actually you know a, a very intriguing idea. I think it hasn't lost its value even now. A lot of companies, a lot of brands now promote that they will connect you with somebody who's next door. And I think this is a great value proposition. And of course, with the the expansion of uh, mobile apps and GPS location, this has become a major uh, selling point. You would be able to meet somebody uh, that's really next to you or may intersect your actual route to work or uh, route home. So that was, I think, that is, I think, a very strong value proposition. But I think there's an alternative. Uh, I think people actually spend now most of their time online and i do believe that a lot of the uh, lack of attention or lack of connection that, that people experience nowadays can be resolved by 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 connection online i think it's not a, a replacement i think that connection offline and connection with somebody who is really nearby and maybe sharing your culture your values even maybe your social status or something like that, that's, that's important. But I think you can't really, there's another value proposition in distant relationships, in relationships that are formed online, because there are a lot of people with, with similar interests or, you know, interestingly different views, cultures that are located elsewhere. And you can maintain a relationship that will actually help you to feel much better so the the people who are re, who can really be very interested in you 
and pay a lot of attention to you, they could be somewhere very far from you. It's not, it's, it's, it's not a barrier, I think. I think in that respect, you're bringing the world together, which is what the world needs, you know? That's right Actually, now, yeah. Yeah, yes, indeed. That's, I think it's the natural progression for us. And certainly this is the technology. I mean, that's what LTR is all about, love, technology, and relationships. So uh, you've acquired a number of companies now in the last few years along the lines of, you know, following this story out, this thread out. Thinking about those companies, which one would you say you're most happy with at this stage of your acquisitions? Well, uh, I, I wouldn't identify one that is especially interesting, but I think we try, we try to stay focused on our value proposition and try to acquire players that have synergies with the same with or that resonate with the same thesis. So we acquired Dell Mail, a company from from California, but they were special. They they are specializing in bringing to, together the Indian diaspora and the Southeast Asians together who may be located at the moment in different parts of the world. They have a distinctive culture. And even if, if, if members of that community are located, you know, say in the US, in the UK, in India or Pakistan, these people still have a lot of interest and would like to connect within their uh, cultural group. So for us, this business is very much in line with what we are trying to do, you know, you know, supporting the distant connections. The other company that we acquired is from Australia called Cupid Media, and they have their subscription business based, you know, they, they, they have about 20 different uh, niche websites, but also focusing on distant relationships. And uh, yeah, the company itself is located out in Australia, but that's not the market where they're focused on. They have, uh, you know, they have Muslima, which is a market, fo- which is the app focused on the uh, connecting Muslims uh, from all over the world. They have uh, Latina Cupid connecting uh, Latinas from, from various, various uh, countries. So they, so these different business, you know, different brands actually have more or less the same premise. That's a really interesting point. I mean. You bring money to the table, but you bring incredible know-how from the rest of the group. And I think the bigger the group is, the bigger portfolio, the more the, of the CEOs and the technical folks get to talk with each other, you, you, you build some considerable competitive, sustainable competitive advantage with that, I think. So I guess the next question for you would be, what are you looking for next? What's the missing piece in the portfolio? Mm-hmm. What, how's, how's your focus changed and, and what appeals to you most as a next acquisition? Yes. So, so we consider two lines of the two directions of the development at the moment. We are, we have an incubator basically for social discovery apps, and we're looking for, for more companies to join. Most of the companies in the incubator right now are the companies who have been, the ideas for the products have been brought from the inside. So we, we had product managers who uh, either came up with the ideas and they were working for the company, or we have actually engaged them, the founders, but the ideas for the apps were brought, were, were, were uh, developed inside the company. So, uh, um, we, one of the apps that we're working on is, is avatar based, uh, is avatar based uh, dating app or social discovery app where people, you know, we, we probably all of people who are participating know that that one of the problems is to match people and and the and the, the the default way to start the connection is by by displaying photos people you know pay a lot of attention to the first photo and that brings uh, it's actually st- stops being a social discovery game it becomes a, a photo discovery game and whoever possesses the best photo and you know the, the best presentation actually gets the, mo- the more points. So we tried it to leverage that. I mean, not leverage that, but try to to play differently. We wanted to offer people an opportunity to learn about each other before they actually see the photo. So you actually start chatting. You when you register on Magnet, one of these new apps, you actually the the selfie is turned into avatar. The avatar actually looks a bit like you. I would say. You could actually recognize yourself if you looked at several avatars generated by the AI in the in the app. But uh, you start communicating, and if you like someone, then you are then you are disclosing the the voice that we are disclosing the the 
uh, the voice feature and then the photo feature and the video feature. So you actually, you learn about the other person and it's like a journey. It's not uh, an immediate transaction with, with displays of, of infinite amount of photos. I believe that that's, that's what's an interesting and a great way to learn more about personalities and characters, not the appearances, which is, is a lot, is very important. And some of the more provocative, I'd say, apps that we are developing is the actually an AI friend. I do believe, I mean, we probably all watched the movie Her or the Blade Runner, or there's a bunch of other videos that, I mean, movies that, that show, and books that show relationship with artificial people. And I actually do believe that some segment of, of our customers would actually benefit significantly from having an AI friend or even a girlfriend or a boyfriend. So that's, you know, we're doing a, a lot of research and, and our app is, is actually proving really good results at the moment. So we, we will be sharing some of our results at uh, TechCrunch, upcoming Crunch conference in about two weeks. So there's some very interesting findings about it. So these are the things uh, that we're developing. So what uh, we're looking for is, of course, well, we're looking for more companies to join the incubator. We are investing in some of the social discovery apps. And I heard uh, during the, you know, the round tables, during the networking tables that some people are interested in funding. We do fund uh, social discovery, especially. We do have a, you know, a lot of expertise. And, and as Mark mentioned, we actually provide a lot more than money. We, we have a, a, a huge department for performance marketing. We have a lot of expertise in running campaigns. We have also a big um, DSP, uh, the, the database of the users, and uh, we can actually uh, uh, do a much more efficient uh, marketing based on the uh, knowledge about the uh, you, you know, you are the potentially acquired audience. Uh, we have a lot of, we have a lot of technology that's modules. Uh, so we, we actually build our new apps from, not from scratch, but we build them uh, by assembling modules and adding, adding special features. But a lot of the, a lot of the technology that traditionally goes into the dating apps, we have them as modules that, that are already tested, that are, you know, been developing for a long time and uh, are able to scale significantly. So that's that's the the, uh, the proposition that we make to uh, companies that join. And generally we're looking for partnerships as well. So we we have a large database, we, large customer base. I think uh, last year we've acquired about uh, 70 or 80 million new customers. So it's, you know, it's just a pretty good offer. And uh, yeah, we are interested in, in sharing uh, that with, with potential partners. And what do you say in terms of the sweet spot? I know you've, you've been from, you, you've covered a lot of ground in terms of the range of investment from Cupid Media at $51 million acquisition and down to, you know, the angel level of tens of thousands of dollars. So are you still interested in angel? Is that still on the table or are you re is your real sweet spot up in the echelon of, you know, tens of millions outright acquisition? Is there a... Is, oh. or are you, no, the range open or is that is some of that off the table at this stage we were considering to buy a company for hundreds of million dollars uh, recently and maybe some people know that company but uh, can't disclose it but that's that's uh, yes we do have a wide range but i think uh, you know i think there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, well we're investing in people i think that uh, people and values is probably the most important part of the formula uh if we do an angel investment, uh, this means that we are interested in the team or in person and not necessarily the idea. Sometimes it's the oh, we lost you for a sec. It doesn't really matter. It matters that the team, it feels like we have something to share. Great. Good stuff. Uh, you know, <clears throat> would you say in general, thinking about the dating industry is there a is, is there an area that you think that the industry is really missing the mark when it comes to value delivery well i think one of the problems is that the default module is the default model of the business is transactional tinder bumble business is 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 it has a is a problem in principle because they're interested in 
in having user make as many transactions as possible. So not really the solution of the problem of loneliness, but the eternal way to find the solution, engaging in this eternal effort, I guess, is the, is the business model. So I think that we try to tackle this issue from the other end. We, I think as a company, we do have other, other, our business model is different, but it also has other disadvantages, I'd say. So I think there's a, there's a user, there's a customer, and then there's businesses. And at the moment, I don't think that there's an ultimate uh, when, when, I mean, all right. I think we are, we are bringing value to the table, but I think we are all jointly as a, as an industry are not solving the problem of the customer. And I don't know if, if, if we all solve that problem, we would go out of business maybe. So this is a, this is an issue. Uh, I have to be honest about it. Um, so but yeah, I do believe that social life, you know, s social 3.0 is going to be very different. I think that people are evolving and uh, I think that uh, the relationships are evolving. And I don't think that in 10 or 20 years, same values, the same things will be considered a proper relationship. I, I think there will be multiple ways of connecting to other people, even romantically, there will be more, more diversity, which I support. I also believe that in general, a social discovery industry is, is a part of a bigger effort. It's a bigger industry, which is a mental health. I think loneliness is a, is basically a pain uh, or a type of an illness, and uh, it might require very different types of medicine. Um, so we are actually looking at, at mental health industry as well and gaming industry as well in order to uh, try to uh, find alternative approaches to, uh, to the problems our customers are facing. You know, that's a, a very interesting side. I was like, we've got dating, you know, relationships, you've branched out to social discovery. I kind of want to ask you, what is your definition of that? Because I think there was a kind of an arc of social discovery many years ago. There was social media, social network, and then this term social discovery started up. And I think of companies like Sonar that would introduce you to friends. Social networks are for, for hanging out with people that you know, by and large. And social discovery is kind of this middle ground, it seems, between dating and the people you don't know on dating apps. Uh, and, but you try, want to get to know people, but possibly outside of the realm of dating. So, so how are you taking that definition? What, what is your definition in a nutshell of social discovery, I, I should ask you? Uh, I think it's connecting to new people and individuals. Basically, I think that the dating is probably a bit limiting term because there's a certain, in each culture, there's a certain way people date. And it, 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 uh, it implicitly uh, certain things that, that go into dating. For instance, you have to, I don't know, uh, in some cultures, it's, it's going to a restaurant, presenting flowers, going to the movies and having sex. So these are a two attribute or features, or these are essential traits, characteristics of a dating. Uh, okay. I think that, and then you probably cannot really date five people or 10 people. And maybe that sounds a bit strange. So we wanted to get rid of these uh, limitations and try to say that, that we are offering a wider range of opportunities. We are still not like a friend finding app. We, it's like, it's but uh, We have more variety. I think we, especially with distant relationships, it's a very different experience. You, you usually sex is not something that's, 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 that's very usual in the distant relationship. There's different types of, as a sexting, of course, but like actual physical sex is, is the opportunity is limited. You have to travel a long time, you know, long distance. There's other things as well. So I think in social discovery, it's, it's more, it's more enabling rather than limiting word than the word dating. Now we're not a social app as well, because, and it's, of course, I think it's just like when, when you, when you define something really narrowly, then you, you're limiting from other things. But I think social networks were built initially to connect with your friends that you already know. So it's not really a social discovery. Although I use Facebook to discover or LinkedIn to discover new people. But initially I used it to, uh, to connect with my classmates. That was the idea. So I guess the social, the social, social networks or the, the, the apps where you actually 
turn to know people online on, offline first and then you connect but of course somebody can say that but no it's not the way we're using the social networks now and i, I think instagram has become uh, one of the biggest dating apps uh, or TikTok as well so it's like now it's like uh, all these definitions all these definitions are interconnect like uh, there's no strict border borders between them great Dmitry Volkov appreciate we really appreciate your time today thank you for giving us the overview of social discovery group and also the genesis and your current thinking and the kinds of companies you're looking for we appreciate your time thank you Mark, thank you very much. Happy to see you and looking forward to see you in person, even though we are, have a distant relationship right now. Yes, good. In Dubai All or right. before. All right. In Dubai, thank Malta. You. And say hi to Iran. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, will do. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.